you got, you can do anything. You're so incredible, a holy righteous king. I'm amazed, I'm gonna lift my voice to sing. Shout till the walls come down, I pray for my baby. Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Come on in, come on in. We're so glad to be back with you for another Cyber Gospel Hour. And uh, I thank all of you for being so faithful. Now go ahead and press that share button. I want as many people to know that we are live tonight. I have a special guest that I know is just going to bless you beyond the so tell somebody, call them up, call your cousins, your uncles, son. Hey, y'all got to stop what you're doing and turn on cyber gospel. I see you coming. I see you coming. God bless you. All our saints are coming in from as far as Pennsylvania to Ontario to Michigan. It's just good to see everybody. Now, I'm not going to wait because I want this gentleman to be able to tell his testimony and not run out of time. Uh, I told you and I've been prepping you and preparing you that if you've got a prayer request, um, you need a miracle, there's going to come a point in here that you'll be able to write it in the comments and we'll stick it up on the screen as much as we can. And uh, Pastor Jeff is going to pray over these issues and situations. And I don't know about you, but I feel like one of the Clark sisters, I'm looking for a miracle because my God is able. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to introduce our guests, and we're looking forward to a great time in the Lord. Kind Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. You have blessed us to come tonight once again through Cyber Gospel to minister to those that are listening. Father, I pray that this message tonight will set the captive free, will heal the, the sick, will raise the dead. Father, whatever the need is, that you will come in and perform a miracle in their lives. And God, I also pray that you would open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we'll hear a word from you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, listen, I have a gentleman that uh, I'm going to introduce to you. And, uh, you know, it's interesting how the Lord puts uh, people together because this gentleman actually ran into our elder, Elder Brian, I think at a gas station or something like that. And uh, they got to talking. And y'all know when you get to talk with Elder Brian, you can talk for a while. And they got to talking, and uh, a few days later, he called the church looking for Elder Brian, and and I don't even know how that started because we went from him looking for Elder Brian to almost being on the phone for close to an hour, talking and kind of getting to know uh, our ministries. And then I looked him up and heard his testimony. He stopped by the church after uh, one of our Sunday mornings and said hello to us, and we've just been in contact. But I'm telling you, this is a testimony I need you to share and tell as many people as you can um, to hear what God has done in this man's life. He is from here, from Windsor. He's a Canadian A. Uh, we claim him as a Canadian. Um, he owns several businesses here and has some ministries out there. So I want to bring him on. I'm going to let him introduce himself, and we're going to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, put some hand claps together in our comments, and welcome to Cyber Gospel for his first time, Pastor Jeff Garvin. Hey, Pastor Riley. God bless you, man. God, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. And I know you're busy, but you you accepted this with no hesitation. Yes, sir. That's right. 
Yeah, so um, good to be with you, and it was great to uh, talk with you on the phone. And and uh, Elder, I forget his name again. Elder Brian. Elder Brian, man, we met at the car wash at the car, car wash. Okay. <laughs> so it was, it was. I'll tell you, it was so God ordained and God sent. I was so excited to talk to them, and and uh, we just started talking a little bit, and then of course one thing led to another. He told us about your great church here in Windsor and what God was doing and which which uh, really caught my ear and attention and so we had a little prayer time right there in a car wash parking lot <laughs> amen it isn't there awesome. something when the saints of God get together it doesn't matter what our backgrounds are it doesn't matter where we come from when the saints come together it's just that 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 coalition that spiritual thing that connects that synergy. us Yes, sir. So, yeah. well, I'm glad that happened because of that. You and I got to meet and and uh, got to talking and and then you know I do like I do anybody that I've never met before. I look them up, and uh, when I looked you up, I saw a lot of information on Pastor Jeff, and I was so blessed by the testimony. But before we get to that, you are from Windsor. Uh, mm -hmm. You live here in Windsor, and <clears throat> you actually own a few businesses. Let them know because you might have some customers out there. That's right. Yeah, we own uh, uh, several daycares here in the city, the Schoolhouse Academies, and we own Brookside Brick Restoration, which I've had for about 40 years. Uh, you know, brick restoration company. We do all kinds of brick chimneys, porches. We do uh, schools. We do Tim Hortons. We build. We're builders by trade. So we're. I'm a bricklayer, stonemason by trade. Wow. So, so yeah okay. and that makes sense even to your spiritual side <laughs> that's right i'm a builder oh it, it's a uh, it's a uh you're a builder uh that's now right. what about your family i want to get here before i turn you loose for the testimony tell us a little bit about your family <clears throat> okay so i've got a beautiful wife maureen we've got five daughters <clears throat> here in the city and uh, they all live in south windsor with us and then i've got seven grandsons wow so i'm five daughters yeah. Seven grandsons. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm writing a book, When Women Interact. <laughs> I don't mean just the interact card. Yes, <laughs> I'm talking sir. about the interaction. <laughs> I've got a whole education. I think I, I'm going to do a book on it. Oh, so, wow. Well, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. But I'm extremely um, blessed. They're all great kids, and, and uh, they got great husbands and, and uh, fiancés and couple wonderful. weddings coming up so we're blessed wonderful wonderful now i'm gonna yeah. guess here i would just take a stab at it but i think you like the guitar uh I'm not sure yeah if you play but <laughs> yeah we i do yeah i love guitar yeah i've got okay. seven i just bought a new gibson it's a gorgeous yeah so awesome awesome okay i want to get into this uh people are coming on and i know they're excited because i've been talking it up and, you know, I don't want to over talk it like when you talk a good movie up and then you bring somebody else and they're disappointed because you over talked it. Uh, but I don't see how anybody's going to be disappointed on the testimony that God has brought you from. And and uh, I want to give you ample time. I may jump in here or there, but I just yeah. want you to share with the people where, where God has brought you from and, and the miracle God has done in your life. Okay. So I'll give you a little of my background. I, I'm actually born and raised in Hamilton, Ontario. Okay. I'm a Hamilton boy. And uh, we grew up, I grew up on a street called Crooks Street, C-R-O-O-K-S, which is, it was almost prophetic. <laughs> and so uh, I come from a totally dysfunctional family. Uh, the Canadian government, I mean, there's all kinds of things that happened to us as young children. There was murders in our house. Uh, in 1972, we were subject to uh, my aunt shot and killed her common law husband in our in our kitchen on Strathcona Street in Hamilton, Ontario. And our house was like a shooting gallery for heroin addicts. It was uh, when we got up in the morning and went to school. If we went to school, it was we were always stepping over bodies of guys that women that had just shot up heroin and and so it was kind of like a cesspool for that kind of a, in an atmosphere and I grew up in the west side of Hamilton and then into the north end which back in the 60s and 70s it was a very 
uh, troubled area in Hamilton. And so uh, there was a lot of murders, a lot of, you, you know, stabbings. And, and so we, we grew up in that atmosphere. And so uh, my dad and mom both uh, were uh, alcoholics, basically uh, drug addicts. It, my mom was a prostitute. I, we, we grew up in, it was so dysfunctional. And um, as a young boy, that was my impression of, of a father. I, my father never, it was, he wasn't uh, one of the people that would put you on his knee and told you he loved you and he's proud of you and wants to send you off to school. It was totally, totally different. Uh, he had a major, major addiction problem. And, and many times, uh, the winter, especially at Christmas time, he did the same business that I do here in the city. Uh, so you're off for a couple months in the winter. And he would go on these drunken binges for three months in a row and sleep maybe two to three hours a night. And he would stab us with ice picks and put shotguns inside our mouths during the night, wake us up out of a cold sleep and, uh, with with weapons in our mouth and, and tell us that, you know, we're going to hate everybody and uh, we, you know, to disrespect authority and never trust anyone. And so they were my mom and dad both were in prison as well. And so they had served time way back in, in the federal penitentiaries. And they their backgrounds are, my mom, my mom's background was a lot more sounder than my dad. My dad, we're Irish, and we come from a traditionally Irish, you know, background. And uh, everything was, you know, fist and, and foot. It was never, you know, the only, <clears throat> and so a lot of times we would grow up and my father would go into these drunken binges and rages and he would, blow shotguns off through the front windows of our house. Back then in the 60s, I don't know if you recall this, Pastor Riley, but you could buy a shotgun over the counter at Canadian Tire. And uh, he oh, would hold blow on, the man. windows. Hold on. You, yeah. said, you said back in the 60s? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Bishop Riley wasn't there yet. Oh. <laughs> I didn't come till the 70s. <laughs> oh, you came in the 70s. Well, I'm just a little bit behind. <laughs> But back then, I was, you know, a yeah. young boy. I was born in six. I'm 61 this year. And uh, back then, you could buy shotguns right off the counter in Canadian Tire. And so my dad, in his drunken rages, would blow out the windows with shotguns. I remember as a little boy, the snow blowing in on us in the living room as we'd be curled up. All of the children, I have seven siblings, five brothers, and, and eight, actually, three sisters. And uh, we would be curled up in a ball in fear that, you know, he was going to kill us. And the children's aid were heavily involved with us. They would, in fact, there was write-ups in the newspaper that the most dysfunctional family that they had found in Canada was our family. Wow. And uh, we had been taken out of the house many hours of the night, different hours of the night, uh, with in drunken rages with my parents, you know, drugging it up and all the heroin addicts in our house. And they would take us to, you know, foster care, immediate, you know, children's aid. And so we were in and out of foster care, like all the time. It was like an every year event. And, you know, and so as a little boy, you know, I had this, this animosity and anger that was growing in me because I never had a father that would speak into my life that would change wow. the course and destiny of my life. And so... Uh, all, all of this stuff, all of these events were unfolding in my house. And then in 72, my auntie, she she blew, she blew, killed her common law husband in her kitchen in front of everybody. She shot my father. She murdered her, her common law husband. <clears throat> and then she, she uh, actually, before this happened, she was in the bathroom upstairs. And my older brother, James, went up and she had just done a great big hit of heroin. And uh, she came down. He found her beside the sink in the toilet. He picked her up. And when she came down, she pulled out a revolver and she killed Donnie Ford, shot him to death in my kitchen. And then my dad, as he was leaned over, she blew another shot off and caught him in the back of the leg. And wow. uh, it was just horrible. And so, and my mother, because of our background, you know, instinct was wipe the weapon off and get rid of it. Wow. You know, so that there was no murder weapon. And right. so in come the police, they surrounded the house. They, they're going to take us all out. My auntie's on the floor. She had served 13 years in prison and uh, she had been in for a couple murders before this. And uh, she was just, you know, enraged. And she, I remember, never forget, she was laying on the floor and she was 
uh, you know, handcuffed. And she asked the police officer if she could have a cigarette. So he loosened the cuffs off her and she grabbed a, a, a big, you know, a, it's called a 40 pound bottle back then. And she smashed the cop in the fate in the head. And I remember it just opened like a canoe and blood just shot everywhere all through the front foyer of our house. And uh, they restrained her and took her into custody. And uh, no one testified, none of us, because my father had embedded into us uh, when we were young children, you will never rat on anybody. You will never be a stool pigeon. Uh, you will always remain solid to the code. And wow. this is the way we roll. And that's it. And there's no, other. and he said, if I ever catch you stealing from us, from me or your mother, uh, that axe that you feel taking off your arm at the elbow in the middle of the night will be my axe. And, uh, you know, and I'll keep your arm. Like this were some of the wow. impressions that I had as a father. I had no father image. I had no, I didn't know what love, the love of a father meant or what it looked like. I had no grid for, I wasn't wired for it. And so this became a major issue as I began to grow into my teens and began to rebel and I, you know, became a heroin addict at 13 and, and I was messed 13. up. I was just wow. totally enraged. And by 15, I started robbing banks, uh, in the Hamilton area with a group of men and, and, uh, one thing after the, the other led to, you know, at, and at 16, I had already been in prison just before. And now at 16 years old, I was facing a six year penitentiary sentence. And I got six years in the federal pen and wound up down in Kingston uh, penitentiary. So, at okay, wait a minute. So you see all of this, you're, you're brought up in a, a home of crime and drugs. It sounds like a, a movie and we'll get to that later on, but yeah. you're, brought up around all this and then by the time you're 13 yeah you're hooked on heroin yourself Correct. already 13 i want my listeners to grasp that 13 yeah. Yeah. you're hooked on it yourself and by 15 you're now a heroin addict yeah. and you're robbing banks yeah listen to this previous to that i was at a boys mennonite work farm it was foster care in kitchener called a sobble springs ranch on a weekend pass at 11, this is how it happened, the heroin. At 11 years old, a bunch of heroin addicts in the, in the area, there was a rough, rough area of Hamilton. It's called the Steel City for a reason. And they, they used me as a pin cushion and they shot me up with heroin and barbiturates to the point where I was turned into a paraplegic. And this was a scientific fact, like Dr. Dunn, uh, I, they, it went three days. It remained in my system. All the stuff that they shot me up with muscle relaxers, everything. The doctor said in Kitchener at the hospital in Kitchener, Waterloo, that this kid is either going to die. The toxin levels in his body are so high. It could take out several cities. Like this kid is wow. messed up. He's going to remain either a paraplegic or he's going to die. Well, thank right. God I was in a Mennonite boys work farm where the three Mennonite house uh, father, uh, the father parents um, had just got baptized in the Holy Spirit. This was, <laughs> the, this is so God. And so they, and they read a book called Healing the Sick and they believed that miracles were for today, that it wasn't just for yesterday because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so that what they did was, Pastor Riley, they anointed me with oil and they prayed the they prayed the prayer of faith, and wow. God supernaturally, miraculously healed me. The only way to explain what happened to me, and I remember it as we're sitting here right now live. The only thing I remember is it was like Jesus walked inside my body, and He started to put me back together. I felt my eyes straighten, my tongue was hanging out the side of my face because I had no wow. control. I was like this slobbering out my mouth i had no control of my upper extremities and the raw power of god dropped those mennonites prayed when people pray things change miracles yeah. happen the, re yeah. the the realm of the divine faith is released and so they prayed the prayer of faith the power of god hit my body it was like lightning and within six weeks i was totally miraculously restored and made whole and thank god for that
Wow. Listen, y'all yeah. heard that. I need y'all. I already warned him about my hashtags. I like the first one right there. The power of prayer still works. I need to see that. Put it up. I need you to text somebody and tell them the power of prayer still yeah. works. They used you as a pin cushion. Their intent was to see how much you can hold before you die. Yes. But what they meant for evil, yeah, God Come turned on. it around uh -huh. and meant it for good. Come on, All right, so here you are. You're, you're, you run into these Mennonite uh, Christians, and they begin to pray over you, and you are yes. healed. All right, come on. Supernaturally healed. But after that, I went back home, and it's like going back to a hornet's nest. Then I got right. into the junk, man. I became, got raw, I got into weed, LSD. I was into the acid, everything, heroin, barbiturates, you name it. We were into it. And I just had this rage growing on the inside of me because of what I was brought up at. I was raped and molested as a little boy, you know, wow. like from the neighborhood, old guys and all that kind of stuff was, you know, all this stuff was festering in the inside. So by the time I got, you know, I was already messed up. I hit the penitentiary at 16. Uh, you know, and I went in there raw, man. I was so hardcore and everybody, most of the people in the pen knew my parents. So I was like protected actually in a sense, sure. but then I, I had so much rage 17 and 18. I led two major riots in the prison. We smashed out the entire prison. We, I beat up guards. I was, uh, by the time I was 18 years old, I was 250 pounds and, uh, I had pump weights and I just, you know, in my cell and, and uh, worked out all the time, constantly ran when I got time in the yard. And all this stuff was, you know, a, a build up to what was about to come. And then I was, uh, by the time 1980, you know, I went through these two riots, locked up in solitary confinement. They stripped me naked, threw me on a cement bed, uh, hog tied me, left me there. And it was in the middle of that stuff that Jesus actually met me in that cell. Wow. And as a little boy on that Mennonite work farm, I had made a commitment to Christ. I had actually at a prayer meeting accepted Jesus and I was going to the Mennonite church and thank God for Mennonites. And so, you know, and all this stuff started to come back to me while I was in the midst of my pain and the midst of locked in this lonely cell, locked up 23 and a half hours a day, you know, serving months and in, in, in solitary confinement and had all this rage. And by the time I got out, so in 1980, I got paroled and I couldn't go back to Hamilton. And I wound up here in Windsor, Ontario, because there was a bricklaying course uh, here at St. Clair College that I wanted to finish my bricklaying degree. I wanted to get certified. So I finished it. And uh, but the first couple of months that I was out, I had eight assault cause and bodily harm charges here in the city. Like, wow. Bikers were raping a woman in a in a in a an apartment building down on Bruce at the bottom of Bruce. And I went in with a garden hoe and another friend and we demolished them. We just I mean, I all this rage, man. I beat everybody up, smashed their heads in with the hoe and uh, got her free. And I went to court. Judge Nozinchuk <clears throat> here in the city wound up dismissing the charges. I had Don Tate as a lawyer. I don't know if you remember Don Tate. But uh, Don Tate was a really good criminal lawyer and he got me off and, you know, he, he, I got worked out so that I didn't have to go back to prison. But all this stuff was just, you know, happening in my life and all this pain and all this suffering. And then I ran into some uh, Christian people. Uh, I still had these, you know, a chip on my shoulder and all this rage, but I ran into these Christians and they took me to this little church out in Harrow. It was in a house and uh, it was there. Uh, but just before that, Bishop Riley, just to back up a minute, while I was in prison, I was in charge one day of cleaning, mopping the halls, the, the rains, the cell blocks. And I went into, the, it's called a common room where you can sit at right. night for an hour and a half and watch TV. Right. Well, during the day, it's, the TV's not allowed on, but for some reason, the TV was on. And there was a preacher on the TV and he was preaching. <clears throat> and here's what he said. He said, you know, you were touched by God when you were a young boy. You know, the raw power of God. You know that God heals. You know that miracles are for today. You're listening to me right now and God's touching you. 
And all of a sudden, the power of God slammed me into the wall in the room, and I just started weeping and broke down. Wow. <coughs> and, wow. and it was right after that I was released, came to Windsor, took the bricklaying course, met my beautiful wife. She came from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. She was uh -oh. up on a, a, a visiting her dad. <laughs> we met, and the rest of its history. We had five kids, a dog named Ralph, a cat named Kevin, and uh, right. three. I said, I said, uh oh, because that that's our going thing at our church. We have a lot of we we say we have a lot of Scotians that go to our church. Yeah. A lot of a lot of them are from yeah. Dartmouth and and yeah. Cherry Brook and all over Nova Scotia. <laughs> that's right. Be calm. Let the Scotians handle it. <laughs> they got a lot of patience. Yeah, my wife's amazing. She's from Dartmouth and, you know, my daughters. I'm just, you know, <clears throat> because it went from this little back, uh, you know, little church. Jim Olet was the pastor. He was he, big man, great big man. All he had was love, you know, wow. and, he, and, and I wound up, you know, he, you know he'd, he'd teach on love, man. If you didn't know love by the time you were done listening to that pastor, you didn't know anything. And wow. uh, he told me, I, I went to him one day and I said, you know, Pastor Jim, I feel God's calling me to ministry. And he goes, Jeff, me and my wife have prayed. We don't have the, the, the you know, we don't have the tools in our toolkit to, to get you to that place that you need to be. But we know that there's a mass calling on your life and that God wants to use you on a global spectrum. And so I wound up going to Rama Bible Training School. Me and my wife are graduates. And, uh, it was there that man everything else just i mean just amazing so, things so hold on i want i want to get this so that people understand so you 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 come back you 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 got your wife you hear about the old church in harrow that's in somebody's home yep. and pastor pastor Willette, is that what it is yeah jim olet uh, yeah let and you you said and this is the thing that's really touched my heart you said out of everything you've been through and he didn't know what you went through yeah. But his whole message was love. Yeah, absolutely. Man, that's a powerful thing right oh. there. He didn't know what you've been through. Change. See? Got to break the chains love. right there. Love. When he, he would give me a hug and tell me, at first I was standoffish because it felt awkward. But right. after a while, man, he Jeff, I love you with the love of Jesus. This church loves you. We appreciate you. We value you. And, you know, Bishop Riley, the one thing I've learned over my life is that the language of affirmation is the strongest language on the planet to affirm somebody and tell them about their value, what they're worth, their destiny. Talk to them about love and the exponential uh, growth that they can receive uh, by talking about Afro. I never had a father that loved me. I didn't know. I didn't. It wasn't in my my toolkit. It wasn't, I didn't understand it, but that wow. it was actually, <clears throat> it was Jesus that taught me how to love. And he took out all those roots of bitterness and hatred and animosity and rage, murder, all of that stuff, took that all out of me and gave me a clean bill of health. I'll never forget the day I got delivered. I was in an office. I had fasted and prayed for several days and some ministers from Kenneth Copeland ministry came and ministered to me. The power of God dropped. The only way to say it is I felt like I was laying on my back and God reached down and grabbed a tree that was growing out of my body. And he started reefing on it, reefing on it, and reefing on it. And as I wept and forgave everybody that ever hurt me, anybody that ever molested wow. me, I let go of it all. I just buried it right there, put the ax to the root wow. and I got fruit and God reefed that thing. And it was like the, I felt the roots and the tentacles of that thing come pulled right outside of me. And I was totally free. And I, I wow. it took me weeks to get to know myself. The traffic jam in my mind stopped. The paradigm in my mind changed. I began to see people from a different perspective. I began to love people. I began to, you know, one of the biggest things, Bishop Riley, of my life, was in Bible school when I cried out to God on the back bench of a church, God, please help me, teach me how to be a great father. I don't even know how to be a father, but I'm so wanting to be a great dad and a great father to my kids. And man, I'm telling you, our kids are sound, man. Our kids wow. love Jesus and our grandbabies Amen. talk about him. And they, they're worshipers, man. And so Amen. all of this stuff took place as a, you know, 
Barbara Streisand made a statement one time. I remember hearing her on a talk show. When commitment is made, the universe conspires to assist you. <laughs> the angelic realm of heaven opens up and begins to assist us. He sends his angels to bear us up lest we dash our foot against the stone. God's supernatural realms of heaven open when commitment is made. When we commit to something, and I committed that day, I gave my entire, I said, God, 100 plus, I'm giving you my all, everything I am and everything I'm not. Take this broken vessel. Wow. Do whatever you want with me, God. I'll, I'm yours. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be what you want me to be. God, take control of my life. I surrender all to you. And so wow. when I did that, man, and from that point, my life has never, ever, ever been the same. See, and people don't understand. People don't understand. That's all God wants from us. He just wants us to surrender. Yeah. And and to say, Lord, let your will be done. We sing the song in our church that says, uh, I, just as I am without one plea, but that thy love was shed for me and that yeah. thou bids me come to thee, Lord, just yeah. as I am, J yeah. just the way I am. And that's how God wants us. And to that's hear right. how you was raised and what you yeah. went through and the rage and the anger. And it took one time for you to say, Lord, take it out of me. I yeah. surrender. And we're talking today. And you know, man, you know, I'll tell you what. And the good news about this is when God heals, he completely heals. He does a complete healing. He's not a halfway God. He's not, I'll give you 10%. I'll give you 20%, 25% and dangle a carrot. He gives you the whole enchilada. <clears throat> Do you know that they ran tests on my central nervous system in my body? There's not a trace of that left in my body, not one trace. Wow. And it stymied the doctors to this very day. Wow. Listen, I need somebody to put that up there. God is a 100% healer. Oh, my goodness. And I got Hashtag. witnesses that are listening to me. Hashtag God is a 100% right. healer. And yeah. I believe that, Pastor, because some people come and they want to get healed but they walk away not believing they're fully healed. But That's God right. don't half heal us. God is a 100% healer. Wow. Amen. Okay, so you finished college and, and you heard from these preachers from uh, that came down and the power of the Lord ripped it out of you. Uh, yeah. Go on. And then so from that point on, <clears throat> everything began to unfold for my life. I mean, it just was one miracle after another. <clears throat> um, we moved back to Windsor. After we were done college, we, we, we Bible school, we moved back here and uh, me and my wife, we, we went to church here for a while, but then we started a church. We had a good church here in the city for and we, this is going back a, a lot of years. And then I, as I know, I shared with you earlier today, <clears throat> my function is not a pastor. So, and I recognize that. And it's, it, it's important that we recognize that we know our role and stay in yes, our lane. Sir. That's how yes, you don't get sir. in trouble. That's how you don't get yes, messed sir. up. <clears throat> and so you hear me? And so what, what I did was I, I knew that I was called internationally, globally. So I began to travel and we went all over the world. I've been to over 100 nations. We've held mass crusades, 250,000 people in attendance. We've built churches around the world. We've done all kinds of amazing things. I don't know if the viewers would remember this, but in 2008, I was in an outpouring in Lakeland, Florida, called the Florida Outpouring, which touched 217 nations. And viewer, it, the viewers were 419 million per night. Watched wow. us live for four months, nonstop miracles, nonstop. Uh, the dead were raised. I mean, it was all over the news. It, it, it wow. blew. We started out in a little church as a conference. Uh, and it grew from 250 people to 700 to 900 to 3,500 to 5,000 to 7,000. Then it went up 17, 20,000, and it kept exploding. And they were lined up for blocks. And we had wow. three meetings a day for every day. Like we're like 7 Eleven, we don't stop nonstop. <laughs> and the miracles and the signs and the wonders kept coming and coming. And there was a sister. 
that had prophetically spoke a year before that saying that they are coming to this place. She was standing on a platform in Lakeland, Florida. She's a very well-known prophetic voice. Clarice Fluitt, you need to look her up. She's amazing. And she was standing on a platform and she started to shake and the power of God hit her and she said, they're coming to this place. They're coming, they're coming. The, the, the unpolished ones, the ones with tattoos are gonna come to this place. And when they come to this place, I'm gonna shake the world. And 200, it's, uh, you know, this has all been proven and it was watched, but 217 nations were impacted around the world. 419 Amen. to 20 million viewers every night. Every night, the raw power of God kept dropping. People come from nations. There was nights we'd get up and announce on God TV, you know, who's here from Sweden and Denmark and Africa, India, man, they came from everywhere. They packed out. We had to buy two uh, football size tents, uh, tents, foot by, football field size, just to get, and they were still lined up in the hot sun of wow. Florida and the raw power of God. Miracles everywhere, literally. I, you couldn't rent a hotel, you couldn't rent a car. The place was packed out. We even got miracles at the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> It was happening. Listen, I, I got to say this because I will be honest. And for the first time I, I actually spoke with you and the times that we've spoken in between, you have a yeah. saying that just, just blows my mind. I've never heard it before. And I want you guys to put it up. I don't know if you caught it, but he says the raw power of God. That right there is quite a saying because God's power is raw. It It, yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the you know, one of my power of God. Come on now. I'll tell you what, you know, one of my, one of the messages that I put so much time into and I've preached it all over the world, it's called the atmosphere of expectancy is the birthing ground for the miraculous. When you expect wow. to see, expect to see, expectancy. There's something yeah. that's raw about that in and of itself. And when that atmosphere is, when people are expecting, not the mundane, not the religion, not the same old, same old. Man, we, listen, the, the definition of insanity is keep doing the same thing over and over again, expect different results. We've got to expect God to show up in new, fresh ways with a new, fresh anointing, new, fresh revelation, accurate words of knowledge accurate words of wisdom, the raw power of God showing up in our cities, showing up in our churches, showing up in our schools, showing up in our universities. And that's where I've been going, by the way, because of the movie that they did on my life here in Canada. Right. Speak about that. Speak about that. So what happened was a number of years ago, the Canadian government hired a movie company to do a movie. They wanted a success story. They wanted you know, like a March of Dimes poster child for Corrections Canada. Look who we rehabilitated. They wanted to get the pat on the back. Right. And so what they did was they interviewed thousands across Canada. It took a while. And they landed on my story and they said, this is the one we want. He was born on Crook Street. It's such a storyline. You know, movie producers, That's this is it. And so right. they dogged me for about six months. And I wouldn't do it because I wanted to talk to my father. Even though my father was the way he was, I still respected my father. Right. And you need to, despite how many times he's yelled at you, maybe cussed you out, doesn't matter. Respect wow. your parents. And so Honor that I went mother to my dad. Out. Yeah, man. I went to my father and I said, dad, here's the situation. They want to do a movie on my life. And he goes, don't tell them everything. <laughs> Keep everything on the DL. And just if it's going to help young people, you should do it, Jeff. That's what he said. So I said, okay, I got wow. my blessing. So I went to the movie company. They did the movie. It was released on CTV. <clears throat> that movie is now curriculum in high schools. They put together a package. It went out. I, I, I have spoken to thousands and thousands and thousands of high schools, universities, law faculties. I've done symposiums with judges cops, lawyers at the universities all across Canada. We've packed out auditoriums. It's been absolutely short of an altar call, Pastor. Like, seriously. Wow. Like, literally, wow. all I do is go in. I want to tell you what it was like growing up with 
you know, drug addict parents in prison and blah, and their jaws are dropping. And at the end, they always ask that question, the $63 million question, what changed your life? Boom, See? door open. I, door and I always open. tell them, look, man, I always tell them, I go, look, how many know religion sucks? Even Jesus said it sucked. But relationship, <laughs> relationship. goes far beyond culture, wow. barrier, lines. And I said, I have a relationship with the author of the book, not just the book, but a relationship, an intimate relationship. He talks with me. He walks with me. I hear him speak. And I told him all this stuff. And I said, man, and they, they're like, their jaws are just dropping. And I said, and guess what? The good news is you can have him today. How many think accepting Jesus would be a good idea? And the whole place See? goes nuts. The altar it's call. crazy. <laughs> the stuff, you should see this. You got to come with me sometime. It's absolutely crazy what God's done. And so that's where we're at today. That opened so many doors around wow. the world. We've spoken prisons and the worst prisons in the world. We've been in jungles. We've slept on dirt floors. We've raised up churches in the Philippines. We, the, the raw power of God. We went into Africa, bro. I'm telling you what, man. That place lit up like, I mean, lit up like a power keg. They, we had raw power of God drop in a university with about 3,000 3, students. They come up with tongue defect, defected tongues and boat joints out of place. And God popped them all back into place. Raw power again dropping. But oh, here's the key, guys. Listen to me. Expectancy. You've got to expect to see. We've got to see the unseeable, hear the unhearable, believe the unbelievable. You see, the giant to date to Israel, the giant Goliath, was too big to hit. But to young David, he was too big to miss. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Say it again. Say it again. All about perspective. The giant Say Goliath again. to Israel was too big to hit. They were scared of him. Too big to hit. But to David, he was too big to miss. It's all about perspective. How you That's see, right. what you see you be. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Do you know that you've been born again? Do you know that you've been created in the image of the Father? That he loves you with an everlasting love? That he wants wow. to spend time? And before the foundations of the earth, check this out, Pastor Riley. Before the foundations of the earth were even created, he already had you in mind. I studied already. that out. I studied that out. I'm a Greek and Hebrew guy too. I got all kinds of, we got certificates. But I want to tell you something. One of the greatest revelations was that because when you have the revelation of the indwelling Christ, Christ in you, your hope of glory, nothing can mow your lawn no more. No devil can rock your world. You have power, authority, dominion, ability, efficiency, and might to overcome everything. I don't care what the devil's thrown at you. God's got more to throw on you. It's called the anointing. And Jesus was anointed. And it says, as he is, so are we in the earth. We have wow. the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within us. And so I took listen, that listen. into Africa and it was powerful. We I, listen. I, I'm, I refuse to run out of time tonight, and I already told the people we're gonna let you pray over them. But there was a part of your story I remember that touched me because, and I want to point this out. And I, I was talking to my wife earlier. I love how you mentioned, and somebody needs to hear this, that you stopped the pastoring because that wasn't the call that got right. called on your life. And I love that because a lot of people are operating in gifts that were not for them. They yeah. were either pushed in it or or talked into it, or and when God tells you to do something, you gotta listen to God. I love that. But you also told me about a double anointing you received from one of your mentors. Yeah. Um, and I want to talk about that because people don't understand that our forefathers have implanted prayers and blessings and anointings in us uh, yeah. that help us as we go forth. Absolutely. <clears throat> Morris Sorello, Dr. Morris Sorello called out two people at a 17,000. Uh, Marvin Winans and myself. I'm, I know Marvin. Good. I, I actually sang and preached at his church and uh, years Amen. ago. He's a great guy. Beautiful, beautiful family. Uh, we know that. Amen. No one sings like them. 
And so yeah. I had the privilege of connecting with them. And ironically, I phoned him and how I hooked up with Marvin was I phoned him and he said, you're not going to believe this. He said, I just preached a message called the mixed multitude. And I said, well, see, there you go, Pastor Marvin. You need a little <laughs> salt up on your pepper. And so we wound up going. We took two busloads over to his church. Dude, that place was rocking, man. I'm telling you what. Amen. And Carvin and Ronald, they anointed us and blessed us and loved on us, man. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, that was Amen. one time. Teal Osborne was another impartation. Uh, Jack Coe, another impartation. Kenneth Hagen, all these generals of God. I've had the privilege of them laying hands on me and imparting into me what God passes on to another generation. Even in this atmosphere as I'm speaking right now, people are, there's impartation that's taken place because the word of God is not, it, it's, it's effective. It's sharper than a, any two-edged sword. People wow. can sense the anointing. They feel the power of God. And so what's that feel like? And that's one of the things that got, got, drove me when it, when it happened in Lakeland, Florida in 208, when all those miracles happened and broke out into all those nations. We got, I get invitations in my email list. I could never go to all of them. Lined right. up. Because what did they want? They wanted the raw power of God. Church has to change our paradigms, how we see things. We've got to expect more. Man, when I go to church this Sunday, something's going to take place that's going to change the course of my life. Huh? Wow. Wow. Think about God, man. Every fish in the sea is different color. I've, I'm a scuba diver, so my wife. We've, sang, we've swam in Mexico, the Palancar Reefs. We do dove all over. And I'm telling you what, man. When you see the schools of fish and different things, you know God's a creative God. You and he, know that. <laughs> he put his creativity in us. And listen, I'll tell you what, there's no excuses. You, There's no excuses why you got to be broke. Wow. I got grade That's three right. education. I can't write. I don't even know how to write. All I can do is print. And I popped open six businesses, own properties, and money. We're blessed. And all because... Jesus, and I took that on as real, I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. Nothing's impossible with God. Everything's possible. No matter what you're going through, God wants to touch you. Right. Now, now you had mentioned when I when I asked you to come on, and I apologize for those of you listening. I know I'm, I keep pushing my earphones in and they're telling me it's making noise, but they keep sliding out. So, Deal with me. <laughs> but I wanted to, to give an opportunity. I don't want to run out of time. I wanted to give an opportunity because he said to me when I invited him, he says, and I want them to, if they got miracles, they need miracles in their lives, they got specific things, tell them to bring them, write them down. And, and this is something I want Let's to see if it program. works. That's Let's right. I want to, <laughs> you got to see if they got the faith. Let's see what's going on. And what I want you to do, my listening audience, as we're talking right now, as I'm speaking, if you have a prayer request, if you need a miracle, start typing it down. If you don't want to say what it is, put on their special request or whatever. But we are going to start posting some of these up. Yeah. And Pastor, I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk on miracles, and then you could just go forth in prayer. Yeah. We've got about 12 good minutes, but I want yeah. these things yeah. to just keep coming up because I believe, I believe that a miracle is going to take place tonight, right exactly. here on Cyber Expectancy. Gospel. Expectancy. Expectancy. Going to happen now. Faith. All right. So this start writing it. Future tense. Faith Amen. is now. Hope is future tense. Faith is now. Now faith is the substance yes. of things hoped for. Amen. So here's two things I got earlier when I was praying. Number one, cataracts. Cataracts. And the other thing was I saw a left arm. It was an elbow. I believe it was a bone issue. So two things I felt that God wanted to deal tonight. Arthritis, bone conditions. And the second thing is cataracts. No child of God should have cataracts. And so we're going to pray right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just break the power of cataracts off of the yeah. eyes. You give us eyes to see. I command those cataracts to dissipate and to dissolve right now dissolve. in the name, in the of, name of Jesus. Jesus. I speak to all bone conditions in Jesus' name. I command your arm to be healed, a broken mm. arm to be healed right now. Uh, bone problems. 
all, all types of bone and hip shoulder rotator cuffs, a jaw. I just saw someone's jaw is being healed right now. The power of God's coming into you right now. Your jaw, I think it's uh, a jaw issue. I'm not sure of the term, uh, TMJ, uh, in your jaw. God's healing that. Now receive that right now by faith. Expect to see. And so receive it right now. And then type it in. Type it in saying, yes, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Riley, that just, I just felt the raw power of God hit me and I just got healed. We need to heal. Total 100% healing. Connie Dawson, we're praying for you right now. All these people coming up, we're praying right now, releasing the raw power of God. What is it? Salvation for your family. Restoration. Yes. Yeah. I, sister, I see you, sister. Yeah. Charmaine Scott, we see that. God heal right now. Spe Le Leanne Riley, right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Just receive right now in this atmosphere. I break off the powers of darkness. I break off oppression, heaviness, fatigue, anxiety, stress, worry, all the demonic forces. I bind them in the name of Jesus and the command them to loose you and let you go free in Jesus' name. I speak healing and health into your body. I speak increase in your finances. I break off the spirit of poverty and release the spirit of prosperity in the name of Jesus. You were born for greatness. You were born to excel. You're a child of the king. God doesn't make junk. He builds beautiful things. And so be healed in the name of Jesus. We pray for Michael right now. God, raw power of God, share this with your friends, share this broadcast. Even later, yes. there'll be a residual anointing where people will get healed and then they'll be able to weigh in and tell us the, the good news about what Jesus did. All of yes. this right now. Yes, your wife's leg right now. Tim Turner, I see it in the name of Jesus. Name I speak Jesus. miracles into her leg right now. Be healed. Receive healed. fire come, fire come in Jesus name. Be healed right now. Mm. Miracles flow into your body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mm. name. We release that right now. We expect to see. We expect to see. We have expectancy. You. Lord, you are great. We give you praise, glory, honor. It belongs to you. God, we thank you for the realm of the miraculous being released in this broadcast right now. Lord, the realm of the miracles, the realm, your right knee, be healed, Leanne, right now. I speak healing into your knee. In the name of G, I command all the inflammation to cease and desist it to be dried up and be no more. And I speak healing and miracles right now into your name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Tennis elbow, severe tennis. Tamara, past three months, shoulder problem. Thank you, listening Lord. Met you 30 years ago from Faith World Outreach. Right now, be healed, Tamara, right now. In the name of Jesus, tennis. That's what I saw, tennis elbow. Right now, be healed. I command that what God reveals, he heals. Now receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Wow. Right now. Man. Let that happen. Let that happen. <clears throat> let that happen. Let it flow. Receive an anointing. Addictions broken. In Jesus' name. We break off Jesus. addictions, paradigms, mindsets, things that come to the mind. In Jesus' name. We break wow. that off. Casting down every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. We break off the powers of darkness off of your wow. family. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. <clears throat> there's wow. jaws, there's teeth problems being healed right now. Be healed right now. Just, just receive, say, yes, that's mine. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. When you decree a thing, get this into your spirit. When you decree a thing, it literally means this, that you snatch it out of the atmosphere and take possession of it. You own it now. So I'm decreeing over you healing. I'm decreeing spirit of suicide. I break you off in That's Jesus right. name right now. Stop in your endeavors and be wow. no more. Healing, lock job for my luck. Right there. See, that's yeah, what I'm seeing, yeah. jaws. Right now, be healed, sis. Victoria, right now, what God reveals, he heals. Now, I want you to raise your hand, sister Victoria, and receive by faith right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. In the name receive. I command healing to flow into your jaw and for you to be healed and restored 
in Jesus name right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. Right now. Amen. Wow. Come Amen. on, Jesus. Amen. We, we got we got to thank you all for writing on here. And yeah, uh, we, we've got to start wrapping up. But I'm telling you, I feel that raw power of God. That's my new yeah. word, Pastor. Don't you don't get upset when you hear it somewhere. I, I, I took it from you. That's the raw power of God. Uh, my That's wife it. put up there that spirit of suicide. We've been hearing about it for the last little while. A friend of mine, pastor friend of mine called and, and someone he knew very close to him just committed suicide out of nowhere. But I'm telling you, God is a spirit breaker and yeah. uh, suicide is a spirit. And we Thank cast you, that Jesus. out in the name of yeah. Jesus. Yeah, man. And anyone out there that maybe you slipped a little bit, maybe you slipped a little bit in your step. My wife just informed me. And I want you to rededicate your life to Jesus. Listen, there's yeah. no better thing than accepting Jesus. You haven't right. wandered too far that he can't get you. He can Amen. catch you right where you're at. And so in Jesus' name, I just bless you and command you, the, the powers of darkness to be broken off you. Loose these people right now. You just say, Jesus, I just rededicate my life to you right now. I give myself to you. I surrender all. Maybe you're going to watch this tonight. You're not even saved. Get saved. Accept get Jesus. Saved. Become a believer. Get into a Bible-leaving church. Pat Bishop Riley's got a great church here in the city. Be blessed and, and encouraged and know that your God's big Listen, he's bigger than anything you could possibly come up against. That's right. That's right. I love you guys. Pastor, Pastor, I want to thank you so much. I, there is so much more, but I want to help uh, put some of your ministry out there. Now, do you know what is the name of that movie they did on you? Is it it's called a test? Yeah, a test of justice. If they go to jeffgarvin.net. Jeff Garvin. Put yeah. that up there. Yeah. And jeffgarvin.net. And if you email through there, I'll get the email and we can get it shipped out to you or whatever. Yeah, there's a fee. I don't okay. know what it is. It's on, it's on my jeffgarvin.net website. But I'm uh, going to tell you, if you go to YouTube and type in Pastor Jeff Garvin, you're going to find several testimonies. You're going to be able to see him uh, laying hands on people and witness the miracles. That This is what I tell you. I don't bring in somebody that I don't know. I, I, I did some background. That's how I knew that someone's yeah. going to be healed tonight. So you can go on the YouTube and search his name up. Um, but he has his own yeah. site, jeffgarvin.net. Yeah, jeffgarvin.net. Yeah, if they go to jeffgarvin.net and, and they want to hit the donate button, you can do that too. Listen, I want to encourage <laughs> you right now, real quick. Bishop Riley's church is a great church and you need to sow into that ministry and sow into his life. Listen, <clears throat> listen. here's one of the greatest things that, I, that, I, that I've ever come up with in my life. Uh, if you give because you can't help it, you'll receive because you can't stop it. Now, let wow. that sink in for a minute. If you sow a seed, a seed doesn't, listen, once it goes in the ground by faith, God will see to it that it'll catch up with you in your future. Anything okay. you plant now is going to show up in your future. How do I know Amen. that? Oh, let me tell you. I've given hundreds of thousands of dollars away. And I'm telling you right now, we're in good shape. I'm not asking for money, but if you thought you wanted to donate on jeffgarvin.net or to Bishop Riley, it'd be a good thing. Why am I saying that? Because you've just received something. There's a response that needs to be on your life. Giving is a lifestyle. It's not just monetary. It's not just money. Maybe it's a friendship, a smile in a supermarket. You're, someone might You don't know their story, and yet right. you can be a blessing to someone tonight. And so I want to encourage you. God loves you and God bless you. And I was so privileged, Pastor Riley, Bishop Riley, to be on your program tonight, man. Thank I know you, God's sir. got good things up the road for us. Yes, and, sir. Uh, the beginning. This is just the beginning. And I appreciate you. And, and I knew that you were going to be a blessing to Cyber Gospel. And again, I know you're busy, but the fact that you took time out to share your testimony. And yeah. I know that that YouTube deal is going, going to blow up. People want to hear the whole testimony, but the bottom line is God took you from nothing and gave you everything. That's and, right. And, and when we're leaving this earth, we get everything that God has in store for us. Thank That's you right. so much. And thank your family for allowing you to come on and take time out. Yeah. Um, did you want to say final words before I do my announcements? I just wanted to pray for blessings on people right now. Just right now, I want everybody to just raise your hands and receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, name I of pray Jesus. for impartation right now, a fresh anointing to come.
a release of a deluge of power to come into their bodies, touch them yes. from the top of their head to the bottom of their toes, healing power flow, miracles flow, signs, wonders, and miracles, expectancy come, joy come, peace come, blessing yes. come, prosperity come, health come. In Jesus' name and freedom Jesus. come from every bondage. In Jesus' name. We claim your sons and daughters we for the kingdom. Them. They will come back to you, Mama. You just get ready. I heard it. God said, I'm going to bring your family back. I'm bringing those kids Amen. back into the kingdom for such a time as this. Within 30 days, I just heard the Lord. Your kids are going to walk back to church door. You watch. Woo. Amen. Jesus we name. expect to see in Jesus name. Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to put you in the background. Don't go nowhere. I'll be with you in just a moment. My brothers and sisters in Cyber Gospel Land, I'm telling you, I know you have enjoyed this. And, and, and I kind of wish we could just go two hours of it because I, I could feel that the presence of the Lord has definitely moved and I'm expecting miracles. I want, listen, it's important if He spoke to you tonight, if you felt the raw power come over you tonight, if you got the healing. I want to know it. Send me a message. Text me. Write me an email. Whatever it is, I want to know because he said it. You got to expect to see, have an expectancy. And I believe God has done some wonderful things tonight. That was Pastor Jeff Garvin. I don't even have a lot of time. I don't even want to emphasize on too much of, of the uh, upcoming event. You start putting them up there. But I do want to say, and I don't normally say this, that if you want to sow a seed to the ministry, be obedient to the prophet that just spoke. And there's several ways that you can give to this ministry, e-transfer, PayPal, text to give, Tithely app. There's several ways. And if you feel that God has blessed you tonight, why don't you be a blessing to the ministry and so we'll see to it. Now, the same way that Pastor Jeff prayed tonight for some of you that put your request up there, I want you to know that on Saturday, we have a great anointed uh, prophet God, prophet Amta that's going to come. And he too has a, a healing ministry and a miracle working ministry and you don't want to miss it at nine o'clock on saturday and you can put your request in and uh the apostle prophet uh, the prophet's going to pray over you him and his wife and uh, we're just looking forward to great things in the lord that's it uh you know the rest of the announcements that are coming up i bless you and i thank you for taking the time to be with us go over there and look at that jeffgarvin.net but be a blessing sow a seed and watch God return it 200, 300 fold in Jesus name. God bless you.